Alright guys, I, I'm not quite sure if there's an interest in this sort of thing on my channel, but I figured I would throw it out there, see if people like it, and maybe continue from there. But I wanted to do a book review today on Dan Hampton's Viper Pilot. This book completely changed my understanding of modern day Viper tactics. And I guess I should start off by saying that this review is primarily for fans of flight sims, military men, guys who have a good understanding contextually of modern air combat. So with that being said, you know, this book is primarily about wild weasels and DAD, CAS, and AI missions. And I'm going to use the Marine Corps pronunciation of DAD and CAD. I know that's been a point of contention on my channel before. By DAD, I mean deed or destruction of enemy air defenses, and by CAD, I mean suppression of enemy air defenses. That's Delta Echo Alpha Delta or Sierra Echo Alpha Delta. So this book is awesome because it's written using specific jet switchology, symbology, and brevity, and it makes very little illusions of dumbing it down for popular readers. So this guy is literally talking every step that he's doing as he's flying, what he's pressing in the jet, in the cockpit, what he's manipulating on his HOTUS, all those things are sort of described in very thick detail. And most of the chapters are these particular tactical vignettes, or mi they're basically mission descriptions of what he did and every particular thing that's happening. What he's doing when a SAM is fired at him, how many G's he's pulling, how he's turning, all those sort of details. It's really sort of porn if you're into Sims. The character, Dan Hampton, you know, the main guy, he is a he is an interesting fellow. He's a weapon officer. He's extremely aggressive. He basically does not know any fear. He's profane and he's judgmental. And I found this a hilarious contrast to the goody two-shoes nature of Keith Rosencrans from Vipers in the Storm. You know, Vipers in the Storm is a book primarily about the Gulf War, and it follows this guy Keith Rosencrantz he's a, he's an excellent pilot in his own right but he doesn't have the level of aggression and murderous sort of rage that Dan has he's very much you know America's great and we're the defenders of freedom and that sort of thing Dan is just a t says it exactly like it is he routinely calls out incompetent officers even at the highest level in this book he very much is against rear echelon guys and it just pours out in this book he's very much an infantryman's pilot he's all about getting down very low and killing the enemy and there's a distinction there I want to make because He's not about CAD. This guy is about DAD. He likes to get in there and literally gun SAM sites with his cannon, drop CBUs at very low altitude. He has gigantic balls of steel, and this book vividly describes him being fired at by dozens of SAMs in AAA. You know, and he doesn't seem at any point in the book to express any fear, and it seems like if you actually watch some interviews with him that he doesn't really have any fear, and all the people that know him have said the same thing about him. He's just sort of crazy, and he sort of <laughs> inhabits this old-school Vietnam-style wild weasel mentality. And, you know, this book is about weasels, right? So it's about the wild weasel culture, it's about the wild weasel mentality, it's about comparing the wild weasel pilots against the guys who like to fly around at 30,000 feet and shoot harms. Dan is very much about continuing the wild weasel weasel legacy from late in Vietnam where these guys were flying into SA-2 sites and dropping bomb, hard bombs on sites. He's very much about continuing that into the modern period and doing so with very low casualty rates. I just wanted to highlight a few things that really shocked me on a few levels after reading this. And again, this is very much slanted towards those that are, you know, sim players, pilots, and military people. So please, you know, keep that in mind. The first thing is I was shocked that these weasel flights in the book are routinely flying under 5,000 feet during OIF. So, for reference, Dan uh, was in the Gulf War. It was sort of the beginning of his career. He started there as a young officer, and after the Gulf War, he became a weapons officer, became sort of a leading, you know, uh, SME on combat tactics and air interdiction. But during he was in the first Gulf War, and again, you can compare him against Keith and Vipers in the Storm, who was a more senior officer at that time. He was a young officer during the Gulf War, but the main focus of 
Viper pilot is OIF. So it's it's very much about OIF and that period, a uh, little bit during the interwar period when he's sort of a liaison in, in Egypt, but it's mostly about OIF. So anyway, yeah, so the first thing that really shocked me is these, wa- these weasel flights are flying around below 5,000 feet. There's many points in the book where he's flying around at under 2,000 feet, and there's a few where he's flying down below 500 feet. And you guys know that I preach this and all of the stuff that I teach on my channel as far as strategy is concerned, that if you go below 10,000 feet, you're being dumb and you're going to get shot. And, uh, you know, man pad, AAA, even small arms will get you below that altitude. Well, <laughs> Dan would disagree with me. He is getting down very low. There's even one case in the book where he's flying down below a sandstorm at like 200 feet off the ground and strafing BTRs and trucks with his cannon. Obviously it was a extreme situation because he was doing CAS uh, around Nazaria, but it's just insane by, you know, if I saw one of my guys trying to do that in my squadron, I would tell him to knock it off immediately. But he actually sort of attacks people that are up in the clouds and not breaking that deck um, in his book. The second thing is that and I sort of alluded to this a few times, but he extensively is using his cannon against fixed SAM, sar- uh, SAM targets, moving mud. You know, there's multiple... I mean, I don't mean he does this once in the book. There's at least five distinct tactical vignettes where he's going through his entire magazine just strafing targets that are shooting at him. I mean, these are not abandoned targets. These are fixed targets where there's guys on ZU's shooting at him full auto, and he's doing multiple reattacks at low altitude against these SAM sites. And, you know, his intent is he wants to destroy these SAM sites. He doesn't want to suppress them. He wants to destroy them with his gun. And, you know, arguably the F-16's cannon is very useful for hitting point targets, especially when compared to something like the A-10, where it's more of a shotgun effect. The third thing is... You know, this book really focuses on toad decoys, which I did not even know were a thing, but apparently toad decoys are extremely common in the weasel community, and apparently they're extremely effective, which I did not know at all. I'm honestly shocked that they're as effective as Dan seems to imply in the book. The book implies that his he was his life was saved multiple times from these toad decoys, and he gives a lot of credit to these things. There's multiple times in the book where he's coming off a target after having a bunch of SAMs fired at him, and his toad decoy is gone, meaning that a SAM hit it. And uh, it's not just once in the book. I think there's at least three times where his to- toad decoy is blown away by a SAM, and it makes you wonder what would happen to this guy if that toad decoy was not there. He would probably be dead. The fourth thing is, you know, I'm, I was really interested by his focus on this switch in doctrine to DAD from CAD. So, you know, the Gulf War was very much focused on CAD, and it was all about suppression of air defenses using harms and jamming and making the radars turn off, but not necessarily destroying the SAM units. And you see this transition with Dan, where he's trying to describe how they did switch to a DAD doctrine in the late 90s and into the early 2000s, and that led to a massive reduction in the amount of casu- air casualties that these guys had. So he uses the figure of you know losing one fixed-wing aircraft in OIF versus lo- losing 39 in the Gulf War, and he attributes that to the fact that they were killing SAM sites. So they were going down low and murdering these SAM sites until they were destroyed, right? So they're combat ineffective. They're, you're going to move them from the map. Everyone is demoralized and crying in a corner, or these, these vehicles are destroyed. There's no one left to man them. And he's also pointing out to the fact that, you know, he resents this contemporary focus again on UAVs and uh, shooting cruise missiles on a map to suppress air defenses, pointing out that, you know, this wouldn't, would never work in a war against a modern foe like China or Russia that would be able to intercept those things effortlessly, right? So we can use it against Libya. We can lob cruise missiles at SA-5 sites in Libya. Why? Because the Libyans don't have SA-17s and SA-15s that can effortlessly intercept these objects coming in. And of course, UAVs would not stand a chance in a modern combat environment. So he en- he actually ends the book with a warning not to get too much focus back on SEAD. And he sees a transition more to SEAD in contemporary years as non-combat officers 
wind up running the Air Force, or they join the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and he very clearly articulates his disdain for these people who don't know what combat's like and don't know what troops on the ground need. The last thing that sort of surprised me was that he really hates the harm, right? So <laughs> you, the guys that are into Sims know that the harm is pretty effective at suppressing radars, and we sort of like the harm because it keeps us safe. We can shoot it from 30 miles away or 40 miles away, take out a radar, and that's the end of the SAM site. But Dan is very much against harms. He thinks that all they'll do is they'll temporarily make a radar shut off. You might even hit the radar, but they'll replace the radar and they'll return fire. And that does actually happen in the sims that we fly. And it's a good point, right? So, like, I'm... I sort of have... Over time... I actually have adopted his mindset without before I read this book, because I went from originally being a harm guy, and now I'm very big on killing these SAM sites with CBUs. I'd rather kill a couple SAM sites than suppress five. The suppression will allow you to roll in temporarily, but eventually those SAM sites will be regenerated with radars, or they might not work at all, and then you can't do anything with them. So, back to the book. Dan is very much in preference of CB using cannon to destroy the target, and he really likes the AGM-65 Hotel, and he likens it to a targeting pod. He says that the video quality on the AGM-65 Hotel is so good that it's essentially comparable to, to a targeting pod, which I thought was really interesting. So, to wrap this up, I think that a great reading circuit would be Vipers in the Storm followed by Viper Pilot. You know, the former is sort of centered on the Gulf War and 90s tactics, and Viper Pilot is all about DAD and late 90s and 2000 tactics. So, you know, Dan is, was responsible for the DAD campaign against Belgrade during the Operation Allied Force. He was the sort of engineer of that air campaign, and then he really came into sort of fruition. You know, it all sort of came to fruition during OIF, where he was a very important leader in the Wild Weasel movement. And you see sort of how effective, or at least he, it seems to imply, I mean, he's the one portraying himself, so of course he will look effective in the book. But I think that it's clear to say, say you know, using his own metrics and his own data, that the Diad stuff was very effective in Iraq, at least. And that is the worst possible terrain to do Diad in, because you're on flat terrain mostly, where you can't terrain mask and go behind hard or soft cover there's very little opportunity there for using the train to your advantage but even so the diad was highly effective so i think this is a great book for anyone who's you know really into military history really into sims big time anyone who's a fan of uh the viper f-16 anything to do with you know, if you, if you have a good understanding of how the F-16 was used during the Gulf War, I would highly recommend that you read this book because me, as someone who is very adept on how it was used during the Gulf War and used during the, the mid to late 90s, this really opened my eyes to the fact that they were this low in the 2000s and sort of the transition now even away from that back into this higher altitude game. It, the book is, like I said, it's very heavy on specific... HOTUS and switchology stuff going on, so he's describing all the things that he's doing, which is great for someone like me. I would find it to be, it might be intimidating or boring for someone who, you know, doesn't quite understand the descriptions of all the switchologies. He does introduce them and explain them in the book, but I still think that this is a book written, written for pilots by pilots. You know, it's sort of intended for an audience that either likes the F-16, knows how to fly the F-16, or wants to learn how to fly the F-16, or are sim simulation enthusiasts, or simulation designers, or those who are in the simulation industry. Um, if you're open-minded mil to military history in general, I think you would enjoy the book. But I would really... The reason why I'm doing this review for the channel is I think that my subscribers would absolutely love this book. This book is... I mean, and also it's very short, so... It's like 200 and something pages, it's big font, it's pretty big margins. You could probably read it in, honestly, four hours. I mean, it took me several weeks, but I was reading literally three or four pages at a time and then going to blow stuff up in BMS, so that was basically my rate. So, again, I'd highly recommend this book. I'd also highly recommend The Vipers in the Storm. 
just as a point of contrast, and also because I think Keith Rosenkranz is another excellent pilot in his own right. So uh, let me know if this review is helpful or if any of you actually got to the end. I have no idea if there's any demand for something like this on my channel. I just decided I wanted to talk about this and share some information. So enjoy.